Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for joining me today. This is Back to the Basics, and we just want you to know how much we appreciate those of you that have responded, those of you that have tuned in and watched and shared with us how much you're enjoying these uh, lessons, and uh, I just want you to know how much I appreciate hearing from you. It's always a joy in knowing that you're helping people, that you're ministering to them, you're inspiring their faith, you're teaching them, and that they're becoming the winners in life that God wants them to be. So that's why we're doing this uh, teaching on the basic principles of the life of faith, because we want you to become the winner in life that God has called you to be. Now, once again, we're talking about, and we have been for several weeks now, developing and building an accurate prayer life. And I've said this on the previous programs, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's so important. You need to learn to make God's Word His part of your prayer life. And the reason being is because if you learn to pray God's Word, then you're going to be praying the perfect will of God because God will never say something in His Word and then will the opposite. Now, if you don't know what the will of God is regarding the healing of your body, then you go to the Word because the Word will clearly tell you what His will is. If you don't know the will of God, regarding your children being saved, go to the Word of God, and it will clearly tell you what God's will is regarding your children uh, being saved and, and receiving salvation. If you don't know what the will of God is concerning prosperity or meeting your needs, then go to the Word of God, because it will clearly tell you what God's will is. And I'll just let you in on this part. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, why would He make a statement like that if He didn't intend to back it? You know, uh, I want a God I can trust. How about you? And I have found in Jehovah, I have found in El Shaddai, the God I serve, can be trusted. I've been serving Him for 52 years now. I've been living by His Word. I've been living by faith in His Word for 52 years, and He has never let me down. Not one time. Now, I'm not exaggerating. Not one time has He ever let me down. Now, I will say this. He hasn't always answered the prayer in the time frame that I would have liked for Him to do, but nevertheless, He did answer the prayer. Amen? And that's, that's, that's part of learning how to uh, stand and persevere and uh, not being moved by what you feel and what you see. But I've learned to do that, praise God. I have developed the art of standing. I like to say, my name is Jerry. Having done all to stand, stand, Savelle, praise God. I know how to stand on the Word, and I know how to persevere, and I know how to wait for results, and uh, God, once again, has never let me down. And He's no respecter of persons. He won't let you down either. Now, let's look at John chapter 15 and verse 7. If you have the Bibles with you, why don't you join with me? Jesus speaking, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, don't leave this out. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, that tells me right there, you're going to have to spend some time in the Bible to find out what are the words of Jesus. If you're ever going to get His Word abiding in you, then doesn't it stand to reason that you'd have to spend quality time in the Bible? You know, God didn't, God didn't produce this because He didn't have anything else to do. God didn't produce this because He wanted to hear what He thought. No, He produced this for our benefit. He had men shed their blood to get this, this in our hands, praise God. And when you have the Bible, the copy of the Word of God, then praise God, you also have a copy of the will of God because His Word is His will. So Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. In other words, if the Word of God is dwelling in you richly, as the Apostle Paul said in Colossians 3.16, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. If His Word is dwelling in you richly, if His Word is abiding in you, then you're going to know what the will of God is in every situation in your life. Amen. So that's why it's so important to go to the Word of God and find out first, before you pray, 
find out first what his word says about your situation. Now, we've been talking about uh, healing. We've been talking about uh, praying the perfect will of God where our health is concerned. So let's just stick with that for uh, another lesson or two. And let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. If you have your Bibles with me, go to Proverbs chapter 4. And let's look at verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Listen to that. If you attend to God's word, if you refuse to allow it to depart from your eyes, if you fill your heart with it, then it's going to bring life to you and it will produce health to all your flesh. Another translation says it, it, it will be medicine to your flesh. Now, I know that most of you that are watching right now, you've been to the doctor one time in your life. I remember when I was a young boy, uh, it seemed like every young boy in my town, we all had the same doctor. His name was Dr. Strain. And uh, I, I never forget him. He, his father was a doctor and, and he became a doctor. And it seemed like every friend that I had in school, all of us went to Dr. Strain when we were sick or ill and, and, and needed his attention. And I remember many times that he would give my mother a prescription. And he'd, they'd have on this prescription exactly what we were to do. And sometimes it would read like this, take this pill three times a day, every day for the next seven days. Well, that was what we were to, to do. Now, that's attending to the Word. In other words, we were to attend to what the doctor's prescription said. If we just bought the medicine, took it home, put it in the cabinet, never took it off the shelf, and never did what it said, then when we went back to the doctor and he said, how are you doing? Well, doctor, I'm still sick. Well, did you follow the prescription? Uh, no, we bought the medicine. We put it on the shelf in the medicine cabinet. But no, we, we haven't seen it since. Well, why can you figure out why you didn't get healed? Because you didn't pay attention to what the doctor told you. That's what God is saying. Pay attention to what my word is telling you. Don't let it depart from your eyes. Keep it in the midst of your heart. This is God's prescription or his medicine for health. And if you will do this, then it is going to produce healing in your body. Amen. So when you pray for healing, then you go to the word of God, find out what his word says, that it's medicine to your flesh, that he sends his word and heals us, that by his stripes we are healed, that we are redeemed from the curse. And if you read about the curse in Deuteronomy chapter 28, you'll find out that every sickness and every disease known to mankind is under the curse and you've been redeemed from the curse. So how do I pray? I pray according to what I just found in the word. And I'm saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Your word says I am redeemed from the curse of the law and under the curse of the law is every sickness and every disease. So therefore I am redeemed from every sickness and every disease and I'm holding fast to your word and I'm expecting it to bring results in my body. So I declare in Jesus name, I am the healed in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Now that's what I've done all these years and praise God, it's still working after 52 years. Amen. So what am I doing? I'm attending to the Word. This is, I'm following God's prescription for health and for life. Can you say amen to that? Now, listen to this. To, I wrote this in my notes, this little book that I produced many years ago uh, about the basic principles of the life of faith. And I wrote this in it. To fill God's prescription, you must put the Word of God first place in your life and allow it to be final authority. I'm going to read it again. To fill God's prescription, you must put the Word of God first place in your life 
and allow it to be final authority. Now, putting it first place, that means you believe it more than you believe anything else. A good example of this is found in, in uh, Matthew chapter 8, and we've covered this in the past, but I, I feel that it's important that we look at it again. There was a man that came to Jesus. He was a centurion, a Roman soldier, and he said to Jesus, my servant at home uh, is sick. And uh, he said, uh, uh, Jesus said, rather, I will come and heal him. And the, the centurion said, that's not necessary. You don't have to come to my house. And if you read it in Matthew chapter 8, beginning in about verse 5, all the way through verse 10, you'll find out that this man said, it's not necessary for you to come to my house. All you have to do is speak your word and my servant will be healed. And then he goes on to explain why he said that. He said, I understand authority. I am a man with authority. I'm a man who has authority. I tell a man do this and he does it. I tell a man to come and he comes. I tell a man to go and he goes. He says, I recognize authority and I recognize authoritative words. And I see that in you. So what I'm saying is this, you don't have to come to my house. You don't have to come and lay hands on him. All you have to do is speak the word and my servant will be healed. Now, Jesus turned to his disciples and made this statement. He said, I have not seen such great faith, not even in Israel. Now, what is he referring to? He's saying, I haven't seen this kind of faith even in Israel among religious people. And that's where we should be seeing this kind of faith. No, they were seeking signs. They were seeking uh, everything else, but uh, they had no confidence in his word. But this man did because he understood authority and he understood that when words came out of Jesus' mouth, they were carriers. They were vehicles. They carried power. They carried healing. They carried deliverance. And he said, all you've got to do is speak the word and my servant shall be healed. So Jesus did that. And the Bible says, and the man's servant was healed in the self same hour. Now that's what I mean by putting God's word first place and making it final authority. Don't allow your symptoms to be final authority. Don't allow what some unbeliever says to be final authority. And certainly don't allow religious minded people and what they say to be final authority. Religious minded people say, well, we believe that and it didn't work. No, don't pay any attention to that. Don't base your faith on what they tried. Base your faith on what the Word of God says. If you want to base your faith on, on something that somebody tried, well, I tried it and it worked. Base your faith on what I did. But even greater than that, base your faith on what you see from the written Word of God. Amen? And God's Word says that if you will attend to His Word, if you will not allow it to depart from your eyes, if you will keep it in the midst of your heart, then it will be medicine to your flesh. So right now, in Jesus' name, I pray that this word that I am sending to you on this lesson today is entering your heart and bringing healing to your flesh. In Jesus' name, I declare that by His stripes you are healed, you are redeemed, you are made whole. So get up on your feet, do something you couldn't do before and begin to praise God for it and just keep praising God until the manifestation comes. Amen. Don't ever forget, God's Word is healing to your flesh. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time.